So I find myself using these magnetic trailer light kits more and more often. However, I also find myself replacing these kits quite a bit as well. So what I've come to the conclusion is nobody on the market makes a really good set of these. Um, I've had higher dollar kits, I've had cheaper kits, and essentially they all fail in one or two ways. Uh, typically they break down here on the bottom, like this set here. Or, something happens to the cabling, it gets dry, rotten, and cracked because it's just usually not good cabling. Or something internally, such as I've had some LEDs, just not work inside. And so last summer I was using this on a trailer that I was pulling back. The trailer didn't have working trailer lights, so I uh, just, you know, stuck this to the, the metal part of the trailer in the back and plugged it in, and voila, I had instant working legal trailer lights. But when I got the trailer back home, I literally just bumped into this, and it snapped right off. And I said, gosh darn it, you got to be kidding me. I have bought a handful of these things, and I'm really getting disgusted of, of buying these. And this was a cheap set, because the last set was an expensive set, and it broke. And I thought, you know, I could make a set better than that. And that thought just clicked. And I thought, I'm not buying another set. I'm going to build a set. So that's what we're going to do this weekend. We're going to build a good set of magnetic trailer towing lights. Pretty much what you see here on the, on the desk is all we're going to use for this build. Uh, surprisingly, it really didn't cost a lot of money. Uh, actually, I think it's just as cheap as a, as a standard light kit that you would buy online, unless you went to some of the cheaper big box stores. Uh, but regardless, this is going to be a, a unit that will last a very long time. Uh, I did buy a little more expensive wire. It was higher grade wire, and that was because I was tired of breaking wires. As I mentioned earlier, uh, I've had wires break off of these kits. So this is a really good high-quality wire. Uh, it does have four, four wires inside the sheathing, so that'll be great for this build. There is more here than I need. There's actually 100 feet here. Uh, we're probably going to use 25 or 30 feet of this. Uh, I did go with a seven-way plug. I uh, know a lot of you guys out there only have four-way plugs, but my truck has a seven-way. You could very easily use a four-way if you need to, uh, but in the past, I've always ended up using adapters and everything else, and I thought if I could just skip an adapter and plug right in, that'll be great. Um, as far as the, the heart of the build is pretty much these lights here. They're just a standard um, four-inch bulb. You can, you can buy these uh, pretty much anywhere, but they're specifically seen on the back of semi-trailers. I'm sure you've seen them before. Uh, I've also seen them used on trailers with the right bracketing, and uh, you can dunk these. They're great for boat trailers because you get them underwater, and they don't leak. They're, they're you know, pretty sealed up, and they last for a very long time, and they're readily available from Napa or some of your big box stores. You can just replace them. So you need some of these. A grommet, because we're going to push this into the grommet, and you need a bracket. Now, originally, I thought about building a box to stick these in, and I even thought about going and getting a 3D printer and building a 3D apparatus, and I thought, you know, they make these brackets, and they're pretty thick and pretty rugged. I'll just push them into a bracket and put some magnets on the bottom, and there you go. You have a nice a nice way to mount these lights temporarily on just about anything. Now, for the magnets, I just got online and, and found some disc magnets, and these are uh, neodymium. They're basically a, a really strong magnet for those of you who are not familiar with rare earth magnets. And uh, then the next possible issue that I thought that this might be, would it could possibly scratch the top of the car. Now, I originally thought about using the magnets that came with the original light kit, but quite honestly, they just have a, a, a larger donut magnet, but they're not very good. They, they really don't stick to the top of a vehicle very well, and these will stick extremely well. Now, they cost a little more than a regular magnet, but they're still not very expensive. Uh, and then I'm going to take a little bit of plastic dip and dip each one of these into the plastic dip and let that cure. That way when you do stick these to the top of a vehicle, you won't scratch the top of your car. Now all these pieces and parts, I would try to locate places online to purchase them or I might find the same very same places that I purchased them. Uh, look in the description down below. That way if you have any questions, look down there, you'll find the part numbers or at least a link or a place where I got them. Uh, that way if you want to build this kit yourself, you can do so. So this plastic dip stuff is pretty cool. It actually stays soft and pliable. It's more like a rubber when it cures, and pretty much all you do is just dip your object in it and pick it back out. Now the bad thing about the plastic dip is it comes in a relatively large can, and with my past experience, it'll only keep for about maybe three months after you take the lid off. So be prepared to use as much as of, much of this as you can, uh, just because you don't want to waste it. So it's just like dipping a uh, you know a chip and cheese. We're just going to put it right down in the center and let some of this plastic dip go all over our disc, like so. And we're going to pull it out, and you let it dry. I've got a little magnet bar up here at the top that I just stuck the bolt to, and I'm just going to let it kind of hang there and cure or dry.
So I made a few modifications, and to be quite honest, I really didn't have to make that many modifications. Basically, I put some holes in the bottom so that I can mount the magnets, and you can see I scattered them just a little bit to give it just a little more uh, surface area on the bottom. So when we stick this to the top of a car or another piece of metal object, uh, pulling this back and these forward give it just a little more twisting leverage so that when you do stick it down, the wind won't blow it over. But honestly, these magnets are so strong, two of them in the center would be just fine. This is just a little extra measure to keep them a little more stable. I also did a couple other things, or I should say drilled a few more holes, and that was I, I drilled two holes side by side on this particular bracket. This is actually going to be the rear right light, and you'll see in a moment what I mean by this. But I put these holes in here so that I could zip tie my cable to this bracket, and when you're tugging and pulling on a cable, it's not going to pull on the, on the plug itself. When terminating the wires, you could use your typical standby butt connectors, and they'll work just fine. Uh, or you can solder them, which is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to put some heat shrink on it when I'm done, just for a little extra protection, and it'll be just a little bit more rugged. So I have everything assembled, and this is actually a complete unit now, and it works really well. In fact, I've had it on top of a car, and I tested how strong these magnets are. I'm really pleased with, with how strong they are. But I do want to comment on a few things uh, just to make note of. So I mentioned earlier that I drilled these holes in the front of these brackets to hold the cable so that you wouldn't be pulling on this plug when you're pulling on the cable, and they worked out really well. So just a couple of holes and a, and a good quality zip tie, and as you pull on this cable, it doesn't pull on the plug, and it keeps this from being torn up, and it keeps the wires a little bit protected from being pulled out of this plug. So that worked out really well. Might not have been the most elegant way to do this, but uh, quite honestly, this will last a very, very, very long time. And then the other one, as you can see, I just took the from the back right light straight on through, did my typical soldering and, and heat shrink tubing, but it's also got a cable tie on this side and a cable tie on this side. So when you pull on the cable, you're not pulling on this plug. So that worked out really well. And then from the front view, you just see just some places where the zip ties go through. Uh, the magnets are actually pretty good. I think I would recommend maybe something a little different. The reason I say that is I dropped one of these and it just blew up. And uh, so they must be a little bit fragile. Uh, the package I had had eight. And uh, so I was able just to dip another one in some of the in some of this uh, you know plastic dip and screw it back on. It was just fine. But these are awesome. I, I probably will never buy another trailer set of lights again, uh, at least the magnetic kind, because these are going to be perfect for what I need. So last week, coming out of the uh, big box China store, they were having a sale on bags, and I picked one up. I really wasn't sure what I was going to do with it, but quite honestly, it was like $5, and I had a coupon. And I thought, well, you know, for those prices, you really can't go wrong. So I picked it up. And ironically, that kit fits perfectly in this bag. Now, I put 25 feet of cable on it. Uh, so that's a lot of cable, especially when it's that big. And then I also have uh, 7 feet of cable in between the span of the lights as well. Uh, you know, you figure most trailers are about 8 feet wide uh, or less. And 7 feet should be plenty to get the lights on each side of that. Uh, so there you go. It was a pretty easy build. If you like projects like this, please like and subscribe. Take a look at some of my other videos. You might find something that you yourself might want to build.